All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, happy to be speaking to an individual who's got a big fight coming up on August the 9th, and that is part of Invicta FC 36. Jessica Delboni going to be taking on Lindsay Van Zant, and that's going to be in an atom weight bout, and have Lindsay on the show today to talk a little bit about that. How's your day going so far there? Going great. How's yours? <laughs> Oh, mine is awesome. I'm just kind of wondering what your, I guess, assessment of, you know, your opponent's skills are and everything like that. Like, you know, 8-1, and one, seem like they are on the Shooto Brazil circuit a fair bit, and, you know, 0-1 oh with an Invicta, so looking to get that, you know, first victory logged in there. Have you had a chance to really, like, check out any footage on your opponent, or is that something you kind of leave to your team more so? Um, I leave it more to my team, but uh, I like to focus more on my uh, own strengths and weaknesses, and I like to look at my past fights and see, like, if I were them, like, what, like, their game plan would be against me and, um, like, what, you know, weaknesses I have and what I can make stronger, what I could change up to build their game off mentally and shit like that. So, I uh, I don't really look too much at my opponent. I am more look at myself because I just want to be the best that I can be. But I did look at a couple of videos uh, just to see, like, what she's about because I had no clue who she was um, since she's in Brazil. Um, yeah, but no, yeah, not too much to, to say about that other than that. You know, I focus on myself and not my opponent. Yeah, for sure. And you talk about, you know, focusing on yourself. Is there a particular area of your game that you feel like has been most improved upon in this camp? Or is it just kind of like all facets of your game have been kind of leveling up together? Um, Exactly, actually. um, I feel like everything's been leveling up. I feel like I'm a pretty well-rounded fighter now. There is holes I've been working on. Um, you know, little things that I see. Nothing like major, just like little things I like to patch up and um, I guess feel more comfortable in so yeah and it must feel good being back in the Invicta fold there I noticed the last couple of bouts like with Bellator and stuff like that so it must feel good to get back in the Invicta cage too yeah no I'm really excited it's been almost a year so I'm like finally <laughs> finally back in now yeah, and I'm kind of wondering about the, like, w like since we have, like, a little bit of time, like, removed from the fight, you know, like, the big performance over, you know, Reina Kubota and everything like that, getting a rear naked choke in the first round, I think that left, like, a really big impression on a lot of people, and it seemed like in the post-fight scrum, people were asking if this was, like, I guess, like, a career-defining moment for you up until this point. Now that we're a little bit out from that moment, like, wh where do you think that ranks in terms of, like, I guess, important career fights for you? Like, do you really think, like, your profile got out there that much more after you beat Reina? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't gotten, like, that much, like, feedback off of it. Um, but for me, for myself, uh, it was a big moment for me, just especially because it was at Madison Square Garden, and, you know, I live in New York, so it's, like, a big deal. And, you know, it's one of the biggest stages that you can ever fight on, so that was pretty cool. And then uh, for it to be against Raina, uh, that was it made it that much better. So, yeah, no, she's a great striker and probably one of the the best strikers in, in uh, my division. and uh, So, yeah, it was very exciting to um, test myself against her. So. Yeah, was that something that you'd, like, thought of a lot as, like, a kid? Like, you talk about growing up in the New York area. Was the Madison Square Garden anything you ever, like, set as a goal for yourself to compete there? Or was it one of those things where you're kind of like, oh, wow, I'm getting ready to compete in Madison Square Garden. Like, was it an express goal you had? Or did it just end up kind of being, like, a really cool thing that happened to you? Like, what was up with that? I guess both. I mean, I... I'm I'm still excited that I am um, that I've gotten as far as I did in my career because I grew up like as a little girl like wishing and hoping that I could one day like fight in Invicta and Bellator and stuff and just like watching those girls fight uh, back in the day I thought they were so cool so I'm still like excited to be where I am now and then to even be able to fight at Madison Square Garden just made it that much better it just I I mean as like everybody's goal fight you know in a bunch of different venues and all over the world and stuff. But yeah, that's definitely a big one to check off my bucket list. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it was a it was a great performance all around. I'm wondering, though, because it seems like more often than not, like, especially with like a lot of the crossover that's at play, like they'll create these certain rematches and sometimes, you know, even in different promotions. And to that point, I'm curious if there'd be any interest you'd have to go over to Ryzen and maybe compete in Japan within a ring. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Um, they, you know, they even after like right after the fight, they offered they're like, hey, you want to come over to Japan? And I would love to. I I think another cool thing about uh, fighting uh, in general is that you get to travel and uh, see different parts of the world and fight in different parts of the world, and I just think that's so cool. So I'll definitely be down for that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be a really cool experience. But I'm wondering, like, who you get in the regular kind of work with. Like, do you have any regular sparring partners or any, like, go-to, like, coaches that inform your style and, like, help what you're doing? Like, who are the regular people you put in that, like, day-to-day -day work with leading up to fights? Um, I My home gym is Precision. Uh, mixed martial arts is in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, so that's my, my home gym because I live, like, eight minutes away. I pop on over there all the time. I'm always there. Uh, so a bunch of the guys over there really helped me out. Um, Garrett Volpe is actually flying out with me to uh, be in my corner. Uh, we've been working on a stand-up together. Um, and then I drill a lot of jiu-jitsu. And um, my coach, Brian McLaughlin, who's also uh, going to be in my corner uh, this weekend, is flying out with me. He's my uh, jiu-jitsu coach. And I've been drilling a lot with a couple guys over there, um, Julian Bannell and um, Christopher Stanley. And then i uh, been going over to Saka in Muay Thai, which is in Kingston, New York, and that's about, like, 40 minutes from me. So I, I travel up there a lot to book on my stand-up with uh, Christmas Siri, who would be in my corner if he could make it, but he's an old guy fighting, actually, in New York City that night, so he won't be able to make it uh, in my corner. But he was in my corner for my Vanna fight, and he's an amazing Muay Thai fighter himself. He's actually going to be fighting in Madison Square Garden soon in September, and he has a fight coming up uh, August 17th, so... That's pretty cool. So well, we all been getting ready for our fights together and uh, sparring and stuff, and he's been helping me out. Uh, so it's been great going up there. But those are my two main gyms. And I, I travel a lot to um, uh, New Jersey to Pure and, sp and spar with some of the girls down there. And I go to uh, New York City. I go to Henzo's Gracie Academy, which is awesome. I've been uh, doing a lot of cage work and sparring over there. Those girls are amazing. And uh, my coach, um, Bob Constance's team, over there has been helping me out uh, with my wrestling and stuff. So we've really been getting in, it, uh, just kind of traveling everywhere that I can uh, locally to get all my work in. Yeah, it seems like you're covering all the bases there. And I was noticing in doing my research on you, you took your first fight in Muay Thai when you were 18. So the striking very much there and, you know, doing BJJ since you were 13. I imagine there was a lot of significance to getting that submission in your last fight there. Yeah, yeah. I, it's funny because, I mean, you know, my... I started with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, so it was kind of like, you know, I always saw me as a, a you know, BJJ girl, but I love, I love, I love, it's so funny, everybody's really asking what my favorite uh, martial arts is, and I really can't pick, because I love them all, I love wrestling, I love Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I love Muay Thai, so I really can't pick, but, um, yeah, when I get in there, I usually end up, like, I can see some submissions, like, that I could, like, jump on, but I just love ground and pound, so it just so happens that I just stick with the ground and pound but yeah no it was nice to get that submission victory definitely felt good <laughs> yeah and it seems like you have a pretty you know impressive finishing rate from what i was noticing like to that point like you got the five stoppages and six wins so 83 percent finishing rate there and i saw you were kind of like tweeting about pfl a little while back and i mean that lends itself well to like getting points and getting in their playoff structure and everything like that is pfl a promotion that maybe you like to yeah, and I get to that point too. It seems like you really put on for the atom weight division and really, you know, represent for it. I think a cool thing would be if there was like like a Phoenix Rising kind of situation, like when the straw weights had the inaugural one night tournament in Invicta. I feel like that could be a cool thing. Would you like to see that happen in Invicta, like a one night atom weight tournament sort of thing? Oh, definitely. I think that would be so much fun. That's another thing, like, you know, on my bucket list of fighting things to do is a tournament and uh fighting more than once in a night. I think that'd be really fun. I don't know if I would say that after, <laughs> but I definitely want to experience it. I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun <laughs> if it goes my way. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And you seem like very goal oriented and, you know, the success is there and everything like that. So to the point of being in Invicta, would you like to maybe get an Adam Waite title fight with Jin Yu Fry happening? Do you see maybe that happening before the end of 2019 or what are your thoughts on that? Uh, definitely. I, I, that's definitely the goal. You know, I really want to be the champion. I definitely obviously want to be the champion. Uh, I like to be the best. I think she's awesome. I love watching her fight. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's definitely in the future. Definitely in the goal, definitely, if not end of 2019, I don't know if they'll want me to get, like, one more fight or if they want to just, uh, you know, that be the next fight. I'm obviously down for whatever, but, um, you know, it's definitely the goal for 2019-2020 for sure. Invicted goal, baby. Get that belt. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I thought to ask because I saw you had future Adam Waite champ in one of your bios, so I was kind of curious if you had a timeline for that. Um, I mean, there's no timeline. I just want to get it, you know, so... You know, whatever I have to do to get there, I'm a really hard worker. I've worked hard and everything I do on my like my whole life. I've never had the easiest route, so I 
you know, whatever. I don't, I don't really have a timeline, but I'm going to get it. So I just know that. But it's going to happen. It's going to be around my waist one day. Yeah, I mean, that's a great mentality to have. And you were talking earlier about traveling to some different gyms in the area and stuff like that. But it seems like seminars have been an important thing over the years, like Pat Barry and Thug Rose. I saw you were at one time. And also, oh, yeah. there's like a Sarah McMahon one. Do you yeah. still find yourself going to seminars a fair bit? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm trying to miss the Frankie Edgar seminar uh, the day I get back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's on a Sunday. Yeah, uh, August 11th in New Jersey there at uh, Jim and, um they're having Frankie Edgar do a seminar. And I'm like, they keep, like, they post as well. And I'm like, crap, it's going to be cutting it close. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I totally be down to go. And I told them, I was like, if I'm not into it, I'm, I'm going to be there. <laughs> but, you know, I love going to seminars. Um, I look up to all those guys and uh, and girls. And I just, I, they all inspire me so much. And it's cool to see other fighters at work and talk to them about their experiences and stuff. And I love going to seminars and just beginning and getting all the knowledge from people who've already been there who've been champions who've done it you know yeah absolutely and the recuperation seems pretty key as well like the chiropractic work and just like the massages and stuff like that are there any other facets of your recuperation (laughs) um i've been doing uh this fight camp i just recently started doing a lot of sauna and uh, cold plunge so i'll like jump in the sauna for 15 minutes and then um get in a cold plunge uh, for about five, ten minutes, and then I kind of go back and forth, and I see a, a lot, uh, definitely um, difference in my uh, recovery. That, and then with the massages, with uh, Hope Ackley, my sponsor, she's amazing. Um, I actually got uh, a massage the other day for my site, and I feel so much better. And honestly, like, I, the last year, I really haven't had any, that many serious injuries, and I definitely owe that all to her because she fixes she fixes everything. If I text her, I'm like, hey, this is bothering me. Can I come in? Can I just pop right on in? She's amazing. I highly recommend anybody in the area to go to Hope because, she, like I said, like I haven't had, I've been lucky. Not going to want to be fighting, you know, as much as I can. So, yeah, all thanks to Hope. <laughs> yeah, and it's good that it facilitates that too, like just like staving off the, I guess, like fact that there could be like serious injury. So I'm glad to hear you've been able to like sustain that kind of like fierce effort in training and everything like that. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I also listen to my body, too. Like, if something doesn't feel right, um, you know, I take a day off and go in the cold. You know, I just try to be covered as much as I can, and, and then I'm back at it. Or I just do what I can that day, or I take, like, a, a slower day than I would have, you know. And it definitely helps to just listen to your body and just know when you can push it and when you can't. Yeah, for sure. It's good to be attuned with all that, for sure. But I'm kind of wondering the backstory on your nickname. I noticed the nickname was Damsel. Was there, like, a certain key moment for, like, when that started going on, like, did someone just call you it one day and it happened to stick? Like, what's the backstory on the damsel nickname? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, that was when I was in Florida. I went to uh, college at University of North Florida in Jacksonville, Florida, and um, the coach down there, Billy Mitchell at Ludus, uh, Marshall Arts, he came up with that nickname because we were talking about, um, like, awesome boobies and stuff, and so we were talking about uh, Claude Van Damme and... Um, uh, uh, Diesel and uh, Fast and Furious, and like kind of just put it together, um, and it became um, Van Damsel. So, and then that was kind of like too long, so then we just I ended up being Damsel. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I wouldn't have even guessed that. That's a fun backstory. Yeah, it's, it's different. <laughs> it's definitely different. Like, everybody's just like, oh, Damsel in distress. And I'm like, well, I put other people in distress, but. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, maybe repurpose like the whole like idea of like, oh, damsel in distress. It's like, ah, I'm not in distress. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. So people always like about that. It's really funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that, and that's a cool backstory. But I was also kind of curious about like if there's any go to like genres of music that you like to train to when you're in the gym, getting the hard work in there. Or do you cause sometimes I've talked to fighters also who kind of train in silence and try to replicate the conditions of fight night. Like, is there any go to music while you're training, or not so much? Um, I don't really pay too much attention to that. Usually it's whatever my coach, my coach is put on, uh, like, uh, in Kingston, they always play some, like, rock and stuff like that, and I'm cool with it. I, if I had a pick, I'd probably pick, like, hip-hop, I like, I like to sing and have fun while I'm training, so, um, I'll start, like, rapping and stuff, but, uh, you know, I mean, I don't really care. I like, like, if I, I mean, yeah, if I had a pick, I would do, like, you know, hip-hop or, like, you know, like, PMX, I don't know, like, Eminem, I, I I'm not picky. <laughs> I do like something with a beat, though. I like, I like to, like, you know, I like a lot of footwork, so something with a beat is nice. Um, yeah, I like to move around, have fun when I'm training, so. <laughs> 
yeah, for sure. That's a good way to be, but you've also been good with your time. I'm curious if there's anything you want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, I'm just wondering if there's anything you wanted to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here. Oh, okay. Um, no, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on, and uh, I just want to thank you know, everybody that's been helping me get ready uh, for all these fights, especially with the summer. It's always hard during the summer. Everybody going away and stuff. I appreciate everybody uh, getting together with me and, and pushing me and making me better every day. Uh, I'm just so appreciative. And uh, shout out to uh, my management team, Time Athletics, um, Time Elite Management. They are amazing. Um, I actually signed with them about a year ago. It's kind of like our one-year anniversary like this week. So very exciting stuff. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of exciting stuff going on, and it's all going to culminate in that August 9th fight in Victa FC 36, a great Adam weight fight that a lot of people are going to be checking out. Jessica Delboni going to be taking on Lindsay Van Zandt, and appreciate all the time and insights there, Lindsay. Best of luck with the rest of your preparations, and just enjoy the rest of your day, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.